Hey guys, Pastor Tim here, lead pastor at City Church of the Treasure Coast. I'm coming to you from our campus here in Port St. Lucie, 10011 South US 1, on the beautiful Treasure Coast, uh, with an exciting announcement. In the midst of these challenging times, um, we've been praying for you, praying for our world, our country, our city. Um, we've decided as a staff, myself, Heather, uh, Pastor Alex and Pastor G, that we are going to start a new daily series called Seven on the Seven. And so what Seven on the Seven is all about is we're going to take seven minutes every day on the seven, 7 a.m., 7 p.m., to share with you an encouraging word. We know that many of you uh, are at home. Several of our students are out of school. Several parents are... Um, not able to go to work, working from home. Some of you are scared, are sick, um, and are quarantined. And so we want to stay connected with you and let you know how much we love you, how much God loves you, that good will come out of this. And so I just want to share a word with you today as the inaugural 7 on the 7 uh, video cast begins and live stream begins. And um, as these go along, we'll get better with the production, we promise. But uh, here we go. I want to read to you from John 16, 33, and it says in John chapter 16, verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Isn't that exciting today that no matter what we're facing, Jesus says, I have overcome it on our behalf? I always want to know how to overcome the trouble that I'm facing. There's a lot of financial trouble today. There's, of course, with the with COVID-19, there's medical challenges. There's emotional challenges. And how can I overcome the tsunami of challenges that life throws my way? Whether they're here right now, whether they're on the way, whether they're coming in the future. Well, it's in our key verse, John 16, 33, because Jesus says, in me, in me. You may have peace in me. In who? In Jesus. In Jesus. The first question I have to ask today is, are we in Christ? With whatever we're facing, with whatever we're going through, are we in Christ? Does our family know? Does our life show that we are in Jesus Christ today? Listen, you can only overcome if you are in Christ. And when we overcome, it's a miracle that takes place, not in our strength, but in God's. We just got done studying Gideon where God said to Gideon, I will show you that it's not your numbers, your strength, but that it's in me. And when we are in Christ we can start to overcome and experience a miracle when we belong to Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus was all about miracles. He still is today. Many of those miracles that we see uh, with the Lord here in the New Testament include his disciples being around. Some of them include water and all kinds of issues that come up with that. Matthew chapter 14, 22 through 36 Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. So if we back up quickly, we can see that this took place right after a miracle, the feeding of the 5,000. Many of you remember what happened. Uh, there was a little boy who gave up his lunch, and here we are right after, and so 5,000 people were miraculously fed with just a small little bit of provision, fish and bread. And So we looked at that passage uh, several months ago in church, and here we are right after that miraculous feeding of the 5,000, and John gives us the reason for Jesus' quick getaway. He says that the people were about to take Jesus forcefully and make him their king. I don't know about you, but I feel the same way when my wife cooks an amazing meal or I have an amazing meal. I'm ready to take that person and elevate them in my life. I like food. I don't know about you. But so what Jesus uh, does is disband the band of disciples and he sends them away to avoid this from happening. And in verse 23, after he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. So what Jesus does here is right after a miracle, right after great things have happened, he gets alone. In a sense, he quarantines himself from the world for one purpose, to pray, to pray, to seek God first, first things first. Now, 
in the midst of this challenge, this health challenge and fear and anxiety. And of course, God's word says, don't worry. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour of your life? But in the midst of all this, there is one thing that we have. Families, as you're there with your children watching this tonight or this morning and young people that are out of school, there's one thing we have that we didn't have a few weeks ago. More time and less distractions. More time and less distractions. And in that gift resource, as though it feels like a prison to many of you, wherever you're at today, some of you are up in New York and some of you are down in Broward County and you've been restricted from doing the things you want to do. It can feel like a prison cell. But today I'm here to declare Jesus sets the captives free. He sets the prisoners free. And the key to that jail cell opening today is in this time of pulling back. There's no NBA and there's no NHL and all these conferences and festivals have been canceled. In the midst of all that, can we do what Jesus did after a miracle with 5,000 people? Can we get alone to pray? Maybe you're seven years old and you're watching this. I want you to take some time tonight to pray for your mommy or your daddy or your grandma or your grandpa or your aunt or your uncle, your stepmom or your stepdad, your family. Maybe you have lost your job or been laid off just in two weeks as this has come through. I want to encourage you tonight to pray, to pray, to get alone in this time that you have and to pray and to seek God. Jesus did this while he was on earth. The son of God took time to pray, stepped back from the miracle and the activity to pray. And so our point tonight, seven on the seven is this. We all need time alone with God. We all need time alone with God. How can we be begin to overcome this tsunami of worry and doubt and hurt? By getting alone with God. Turn off CNN, turn off Fox News, turn off MSNBC, turn off reruns of whatever. We all need friends, right? But turn off friends tonight and let's get alone with God. And let's pray because his word tells us, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace in this world. You have trouble, but I take heart. I, Jesus, I have overcome the world. Let's pray tonight, wherever you're at, just reach out your hand right where we're at. Let's pray together. Lord, we pray for your peace. We pray, Lord, for the overcoming power of your Holy Spirit to bring healing to our world, healing to our country, healing to our hearts. And God, we pray that you challenge us over this time of life being different to get alone with you and then not to walk away from it, but to lean into it. In Jesus' name, God, please heal and protect and touch everybody that's watching. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, we do have needs as a church like never before. Please come into our Facebook and please click on uh, the videos that are going on and what's going on and be a part of helping us to continue to feed the community. We're going to continue to feed literally thousands of people here at the church that need help. And we need your help to do that during this trying time. We love you. We're looking out for you. Put God first and every second will count. And join us for seven on the seven every day right here at City Church of the Treasure Coast. God bless you guys.